Hi everybody, this is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part four of our eight part basic training for Premiere Elements. Now we've got a small movie, a very simple movie, one simple track of video running through our movie, and we want to add some transitions to it. Now there are both audio and video transitions, although your audio transition library, as I'll show you in just a moment, is rather limited because audio transitions are limited. But the process of adding a transition is really as simple as just dragging a transition between two clips. Now, you might notice that these two clips here, if you look at the upper right hand corner of this clip and the upper left hand corner of this clip, you might see a little gray heel there. Uh, that indicates that the clips are completely unspooled. Nothing has been trimmed off them. I'm going to recommend that before you add a transition, you always make sure you have a second or so, even half a second, trimmed off of each clip. See, I don't have those heels there now. That gives you a little extra room beyond the beginning of one clip and beyond the end of another clip to create the transition. And I cover that actually in another tutorial, what happens if you don't do that. But just give yourself a little bit of room here for the transition to be created. And then we just go over here to the transition menu on the right. You remember when we were in Quick View, looking at Quick View back in part one, we saw a very limited number of transitions. We actually have many, many transitions here in a variety of categories, including a number provided by New Blue, which is a great special effects company that uh, Adobe takes great advantage of. Let's just grab a nice transition here. We'll go with uh, the slide category. And here we've got some nice things like band slides. So let me just drag the band slide right down between these two clips and that creates the transition. Notice I can make that transition a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left or right on the center here. I can set the duration right here, which by default is one second, a good time for a transition. And if I click on the more button, there are usually other options like making the alignment be a little bit more to the left or a little bit more to the right. And depending on the nature of the transition, uh, there are other options like, do you want to add a border between the two transitions? In other words, I'm just going to drag the playhead there so you can see the midst of the transition. So let's look at the transition here. You notice the band wipe means that I'm getting clip two is coming in as a series of bands that replace clip one. Uh, is, that, is that obvious enough for you? There it is. Okay. Now I can open up my transition properties again simply by double clicking on the transition. There we go. And I can click on more. Now I can add a border to make the distinction between these two clips more obvious. And I can make the width of it just by scrubbing across there. You can see now I've got a line surrounding those band wipes. I can control the color of that border. I can reverse it, in which case the band uh, moves outward instead of inward in this animation. And then there are sometimes some custom options too, depending on the nature of the transition. If I click on custom in this case, you notice that I have seven bands moving in in my transition. If I click on custom here, I can change that number to, I think there's a limit. Is it 32? Let's see if we can do 32. There we go. That's a lot of little transitions coming in instead of, you know, seven large ones. Now we got like 32 little ones and we can click apply or just close this window and you can see what the transition looks like. So here's our transition, kind of a cool transition. And you can make that transition run longer or shorter and you can customize virtually every transition. And there are some very, very cool ones in here. To replace a transition with another transition, it's as simple as just selecting the transition and dragging it right down over top of the existing transition. You can also find options in there for the transition and customizing it there. And now we got a different transition. There are audio transitions, but as I say, audio by its nature doesn't have a lot of transitions. If you go over here to audio, you'll see only constant gain and constant power. These are both sort of dissolving from one audio source to another. Constant power is usually the preferred one, although I really, in all honesty, can't really tell the difference between constant gain and constant power. Video is where the fun is, and there are close to 80 of these transitions here, and they're all pretty fun. And that's really how simply they work. The most important thing to remember, and I do justify it both in the book and in another tutorial, is give yourself a little bit of head and tail room beyond the end of each clip. Otherwise, the transition is going to put a freeze frame in there and your transition is going to look a little odd. But that's the basic of transitions. Don't overuse them. They are usually at their best when you use them subtly. Now, hope you join me for part five as we look at some of the special effects in the program.
That's part five of basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements.